In this report, I will answer a question that several of you have asked me privately in different ways. Dan, do you ever fear dying old overseas without family nearby? For me, the answer is no. I do not fear dying overseas without nearby family. I will explain why. But we are all wired differently. If I explain why I don't have that fear, maybe it'll help some of you if you do have that fear. After that, I'll explain six other fears you have shared with me. Some experts believe that all fears experienced in life are related to the fear of death. Woody Allen once said, I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it happens. My view is that almost all human fears have the fear of death as the underlying root fear. So if you can figure out how to handle your fear of death, many of your other fears might also be reduced greatly. I believe that people are more afraid of death than many other fears because they have no idea what dying will be like. So the fear of death is really a fear of a permanent condition that people don't know anything about. You cannot control the timing or circumstances of your own death, so you fear it. People may believe something happens at death, but beliefs do not hold the same power in reducing fears when compared to personal knowledge and experience. We don't need to believe in gravity to understand it. Whether we believe in gravity or not makes no difference when we trip and fall on our face. You haven't done death before, so you have no experience with it. Since you can't define it, since you can't experience it before your time, it is a fear you really can't resolve. You just have to wait for your own death to see what it's really like. Sure, people report near-death experiences, but those are near-death experiences, not exactly the same as the completely and permanently dead experience, though there may be similarities leading up to actual permanent death. But the email question asked is not about death. The email instead asked about my fear of not having family standing around me when the end is near. He's worried about dying overseas without having his family nearby. But I think that his fear is about something else also. I think it is something more like this. When he finds out he's dying, let's say in 30 days, who will he trust to be near him as he fades away into obscurity? Under his fear is another idea. Will foreigners walk away when he is dying or treat him poorly? Or maybe he's afraid he won't get to see his family one last time before he dies. No, Nobody in his family will be there to hand him a cup of water while he's dying. So will the foreigners keep his cup of water full? If he decides to retire overseas, will he starve to death or dehydrate because nobody's nearby him to help him when he can no longer lift a cup of water or prepare a sandwich? Sounds like there could be a few fears all tied together that he's worried about or visualizing. So the purpose of this report is fear one. I'll talk about how I will die overseas with dignity once I get weak. I need someone to lift water, make me a sandwich, help me to the bathroom, or get my meds from the pharmacy when I'm too weak to do it all on my own. Or fear number two, I'll also talk about how to talk to your family and friends back home. So even if you die overseas or in a way that you're unable to say goodbye, no stones are left unturned. Then I will quickly share a few other fears you have shared with me over the years. Okay, how to die with dignity overseas, fear number one. I'll start with the thoughts of a couple I interviewed a few years ago. They shared their thoughts about how to die with dignity when they're too weak to take care of themselves. I didn't actually define my death process at the time, and I'm not really doing it now, but I had a few thoughts about it that sprung up from that interview that I'm recalling now. This couple had decided they didn't want their family taking care of them on their deathbed. They had decided that if anyone wanted to come by and visit during their last few months of life, family or otherwise from their home country, they didn't want to burden them with the daily grind of taking care of them. Instead, they wanted family or friends to be able to drop by and say hello, laugh about old times, give them a smile or hug. They didn't want to saddle family or friends with any obligation to bathe them, feed them, or change their bed sheets in their final days. Instead, they had thought through another way to die with dignity overseas. They had done the calculations at the time. They determined they would be able to hire a full-time live-in nurse that would live in their second bedroom for the last few uh, months or years of their lives. They had purchased a two-bedroom condo in a retired cheap country. They had checked around and determined that they would be able to hire a full-time live-in nurse for much less than they would be able to in their home country. 
As soon as their mobility was greatly reduced, they would start interviewing and would find a live-in nurse. The nurse would do the shopping and the cooking and make sure they took their meds on time. They would pay all of the nurse's living expenses, plus another 500 to 1,000 USD per month. According to their calculations, they would be able to have a college-trained, certified nurse live in their home with them and take care of them for their dying days. But they would hire the nurse at least six months to a year before they both lost mobility. That is how they would test the nurse out to make sure she was right for the job before they were too weak to make a change to a new nurse. To their dying plan, I would add my own little twist. I'm not interested in melting away in pain over the years. So I would get a bottle of painkillers and hide them somewhere in the house. If the pain ever got to the point where I, where life was not fun anymore, I would take myself out of the game before I got too weak to make that decision. But so long as the pain was bearable, I think my curiosity about natural death would win the day and I would stick around until the end. In that case, I would stay conscious and see what death was really about. Okay, dying with family and friends around, fear number two. I like the live-in nurse plan because instead of asking family and friends to nurse me along, I could just enjoy the company of friends instead of depending on them to do the wet nursing work. So any family and friends that I decide to, that decide to fly over and say goodbye once I knew my approximate expiration date could do so with no obligations of nursing for me. Also, very few of us have such control over the circumstances and timing of our death. So we need to make sure that everyone that has important, you know, that was important to us in life gets to see and hear from us often enough so we feel complete if they or we die suddenly without notice. So to make a long story short, death in my own uh, home sounds better to me than being shipped off to an old person's home or hospice for my final days or into a family or friend's home for my final days and weeks or months. Since it's so much cheaper to have a live-in nurse or daily drop-by nurse in many of these retired cheap in paradise locations than it would be in my home country, the U.S., I would be able to hire someone to feed me, wipe my butt, and send me off to the hereafter. Plus, my family, if they so choose to visit me in the final days, would not be stuck doing any of the things I would prefer that a nurse do. Okay, what about new loves and new friends? When I received the email, I was thinking, why wouldn't I have any friends to stop by and say hello when I was dying in a new country? Presumably, I will have lived in my new country for 10 or 20 years before the time I die, right? Why are we assuming I wouldn't know anybody in the new country that loved and cared about me after a decade or so? If I was living in some new country and hadn't found new love in my life, or I hadn't brought love with me, wouldn't I just move back home in any way before I was on my deathbed? So, so there seem to be some unrealistic assumptions in the question itself. Okay, what are some of the other common fears that people have about retiring overseas? Death without family and friends nearby is not the only fear people have about living in overseas retirement. Let me mention a few more. How do I know all these fears? Because people ask me about them. You see, I left the U.S. over 15 years ago, and I've lived in or visited 67 countries. I travel all over the world, and I make videos about my favorite places to retire cheap in paradise. I write reports about each of my favorite places in each country. I also teach people how to make money online by sharing information about their favorite hobby. Visit VagabondBuddha.com if you'd like to learn more about what I do. I have experienced many of the fears you're worried about and thought my way through how to deal with other ones if they were to happen. I get questions all the time from people considering retiring overseas. I will share a few of their other questions first, then I'll share my thoughts and how I've managed those fears over the last 15 years. But my thinking is not the be all or end all for any of these fears. There are millions of people that have left their home country and live overseas. Some of the smartest ones even watch this channel and will comment below on whether they agree or disagree with my thinking. So make sure to read their comments below. I jumped out of an airplane once, but I could only overcome the fear of death and jump after I had more information. I needed to understand the risks and the backup plans. The fear was useful because it got me to pay close attention during the pre-jump training. In the pre-jump training, I learned that skydiving was safer than driving to work in the morning. 
That means that you're more likely to die every time you get in your car than you are when you jump from an airplane. I also learned the backup plan, such as the backup parachute. So before you jump out of your home country, just make sure you have enough fear to understand the main risk and to think through your backup plans so your fears do not happen. And if they do, you're prepared to deal with it. Here are a few more fears some of you have expressed with me. More fears of retiring overseas. Will I like my home in a foreign country? Will I be safe in a foreign country? Will I get lonely in a foreign country? Will I become homeless in a foreign country? Will I run out of money in a foreign country? Will my lover leave me if I run out of money in a foreign country? In your home country, you have already resolved these fears one way or another, but you begin to think of these fears again when you consider moving overseas. Will I like my home in a foreign country? The way I killed this fear was by going to a target country and seeing where I could afford to live, where I could afford to eat, and what entertainment I would be able to afford on my target budget. In other reports, I explain how you should never move anywhere outside your home country until you have done an exploratory visit. Here's my report on that, link provided. Once you see and taste the foods in the grocery stores and restaurants, you'll know firsthand whether or not you'll like the food. Once you see where you're going to live on your budget, you'll reduce the fears you have about your new home. In fact, many of the fears will be reduced when you complete your exploratory visit that I explain in that report. Will I be safe in a foreign country? You can read about that online, but you also need to go there and see if you feel safe. Here's my report on how I think about safety overseas. Okay, will I get lonely in a foreign country? This will depend on a number of factors such as your personality type, what country you pick, what languages you speak, and your compatibility and integration with the local culture. Further, in some parts of the world, some foreigners are treated better than the locals. To fully understand the nuances of this question, you'll need to meet and talk to some of the local expats living in your target country on your exploratory visit. You can also tell by how open and friendly the locals are to you when you visit. For more on this and other factors about the fear of loneliness, read my report, Traveling Four Years Alone, Were You Lonely? Okay, will I run out of money in a foreign country or will I become homeless in a foreign country? Once you brush the dust off the top of these two fears, you'll realize they're almost the same thing. Overcoming these two fears is all about proper financial planning and telling the truth to yourself once you're on the ground in a foreign country. It all starts with the exploratory visit where you need to gather budget data such as rents, groceries, transportation, utilities, restaurants, alcohol, and other daily expenses you have presently in your home country. Then you have to set a budget for each category and stay within budget while living overseas. I have also have a report where I talk about setting a budget, having emergency savings, and pulling the safety parachute when your emergency savings falls below a certain threshold. To slay these fears, try checking out my reports, The Two Biggest Risks of Retiring Early Overseas. I would also add monitoring the new biggest in, uh, risk, inflation, so you're not caught with your pants down overseas. Finally, will my lover leave me if I run out of money in a foreign country? If you want to remain in control of your finances, this report shares ideas about how to keep a distance between your resources and your new love so you can still afford retirement if love goes bad. And read my report, How to Avoid Con Artist Lovers in Overseas Retirement. Okay, thanks for reviewing my report, Dying Old Overseas Without Family Nearby. Please subscribe to VagabondBuddha.com or, or our YouTube channel to watch us move around the world 15 years and 67 countries so far. Make sure to grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 15 plus years. It has most of my best tips and tricks. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube channel for VagabondBuddha.com. Thank you for stopping by. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner? Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. 
While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.